Hi everybody and welcome back to Let's Play Turkey as and do EX Plus. Uh, so last time out, we headed through the um, through the eclipse and uh, got Rion on side and finally defeated that angel once and for all. And so let's start this part. We're back in reality, baby. The uh, eclipse has been dealt with and the hospital is back to normal. <laughs> And the angels fully disappeared, yay. Um, but yeah, she now, but Rian now has, um, so Rian now has uh, the abilities of that, of that angel, has those powers kind of linked um, to her along with her kind of soul device as well. But she seems to be okay. <laughs> um, so yeah. Um, and because of this, uh, it does make sense as to what they do with the um, kind of uh, with the in-between chapter after this one, the chapter between um, chapters six and seven. Um, you know, they do uh, have a like in-between chapter, which does make sense. <laughs> and yeah, he survived. Piece of shit. <laughs> I love that from Yuki. Ah, uh, this shit heal's still here. <laughs> yep, he's been completely defeated. His eclipse, his angel has been completely destroyed, and uh, Rion has uh, absorbed the, um, the 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 powers back into herself. Still not giving up, the fucking piece of shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about this. This is really... <laughs> that's... Ah, oh, that's satisfying. Uh, Kyoka sharing her worth. <laughs> Beating the ever-living shit out of him. Ah, oh, that's so... That's so good. Do you really think you should be, like, t you know, insulting her at this point? <laughs> Dude, she could quite easily snap you like a twig. And of course, uh, the leader of, uh, you know, Mitsuki's grandfather, the leader of the Hotto group, comes out to deal with the situation. And of course he knows Shio. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> of course he does. Seems to know everybody, this dude. What does he have to apologize about? <laughs> oh yeah, of course. Because <laughs> yeah, Mercuria is part of the um, Hokuto group, isn't he? So yeah, I guess it is uh, kind of his responsibility that uh, he kind of went rogue, the piece of shit. <laughs> I like that he's so unbelievably scared. Just, oh shit, what's going to happen? So yeah, basically what he's saying is, dude, you fucked up. <laughs> See you later, bitch. <laughs> so yeah. So yeah, the Hokuto group are going to be the ones who uh, deal with Mercuria after all of his, uh, all of his bullshit. <laughs> Were we forgetting something? Oh yeah, the concert. <laughs> yeah, the whole point. It's just after six. So yeah, you're gonna have to get moving, love. <laughs> By the way, that's something I I've really just noticed. The concert's only an hour. You know, it's six. They said it started at five, and it, they're going getting to the finale at around about six. That's kind of short for a concert. <laughs> to be honest, I don't really know how long these um kind of idol groups or idol concerts go for. So maybe that's just the standard in Japan. I don't know, but um, it seems kind of short for a big group like that. And yes, the Sejiro is all happy. Maybe it's just because it's like a special 
kind of anniversary event rather than a full on concert. So, whatever. So, yeah, it took them half an hour. <laughs> but they're going to get there. Well, everybody seems to be having a good time. See, Ryan, you're not needed. <laughs> oh, dear. I still think that looks terrible. <laughs> they could have done a better job with this, I think. Made it look a bit more, uh, a bit better. Even though they just did outline of like people holding the, um, holding the like the glow sticks instead of just like a black mass. Yeah. Time to keep going, ladies and gents. <laughs> Finally, it's only been an hour. <laughs> so yeah, Rion kind of shows up at the very, 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 very last minute <laughs> to kind of get involved. So yeah, she's finally here. <laughs> she can finally uh, get going on this. Ah, Ryota, you... Yeah, pussy. <laughs> ah, he's such a... F such a fanboy. He's such a fanboy. Come <laughs> So yeah, just the final song to go. <laughs> By the way, I don't know how they were going to do it. Because <laughs> um, I think the final song is like Rion's um, solo song that she was working on um, at the start of the chapter. So <laughs> I, I don't know what was going to happen. Um, whether they would just get a, you know, make some up on the fly. <laughs> Time for a new song, baby. Yeah, that's one thing that I kind of, um... With this game that I, is a little bit of a disappointment is the actual soundtrack. It's not like it's a bad soundtrack. And it does have like it does have a lot of um, like fairly catchy like tracks and stuff like that. Um but it's just like it's just nowhere near the level that I would have liked for this kind of thing. I mean, it's trying to be similar to, or taking excuse rather a little bit from the Persona series. Um, and when it comes down to it, <laughs> when I, if you're going to try and associate yourself with the Persona. Um, or be in a similar vein to the Persona series, then you need to ha get the music down right. And I don't think this get, I don't think Tokyo Xanadu quite gets it 100% right. Like I said, it's not bad. It's just kind of... Uh, a lot of the soundtrack is kind of a bit dull, a bit bland, uh, with some really catchy... Um, tracks, but that's really about it, really. It's a bit of a disappointment, <laughs> but whatever. <laughs> I'm sorry if you can hear the dog in the background, that stupid mutt. So yeah, where's all the energy come from? And so yeah, it's all kind of sorted out in the end. She can continue on with her singing, and the angel is kind of uh, 
dealt with afterwards. Wow. <laughs> okay. That doesn't give you a lot to go on. Okay, you should have had at least some dialogue there, to be fair. It's not really all that good. Oh, there he is again. That white piece of shit. <laughs> the white shroud. Still not showing his face. Don't you do a fairly decent job of kind of hiding the identity of this dude for quite a long time? <laughs> so yeah, maybe Mikuri was working on... It seems as if Mikuri was um, a little bit working on behalf of these guys as well. That, you know, he was kind of pushing... Uh, Rion from behind to kind of get her to awaken to her powers, as as it were. He also mentions, you know, the child we've already seen and the other person, and they finally reveal it. So yeah, he's been working with um, <laughs> the White Shroud has been working with Goro the entire time. So yeah, he's a, a major part of the Underworld too. <laughs> And he says Sensei. So yeah, that's kind of a little bit of a clue as to who the White Shroud is. And I think if you... Uh, uh, it's kind of interestingly take away the kind of voice filter at this point. So that you can kind of hear his regular voice a little bit. Um, and you, so you can kind of get a hint of who he is without the confirmation. I think we get the confirmation next chapter. But yeah. Yes, it is, because <laughs> chapter 7 is the last chapter of the game. But yeah. Yay. Yay, and Rion's up to rank 6. I think that's max rank. So yeah, chapter 6 is now done. Time to move on to the... Um, bleh, sorry. Time to move on to the side chapter. Which I said it kind of has a direct kind of... <clears throat> link to chapter 6 because the uh, the chapter 6 uh, side story is um, basically focuses on Rion and kind of how she's being um, uh, what's the word kept an eye on uh, by uh, members of the underground by the um the hokto group and stuff um just to make sure um that you know her powers aren't going to go out of control again that she you know all you know fit and healthy um you know to make sure that she's all fit and healthy uh, and that you know nothing's and the powers aren't going to going to cause kind of any issues for her so yeah, it's kind of a little bit of a... Uh, it's also a little bit of a, a, a way of... What's the word? It's kind of a way of basically adding... Sorry, my brain's not working. It's basically a way of adding uh, Rion... Of giving Rion kind of like a... Um, initiation into the XRC group as well. So yeah, that's kind of it. It's Resolute Wings. Yeah, it's kind of a nice little um, side chapter. Yeah, and this is the, I think, if I remember correctly, the rest of the side stories, they don't really tell you when it happens. You kind of just... Um, Except, uh, you know, kind of interpret that the chapters take place like relatively close to the events of the chapter that they're proceeding, that they're succeeding rather. Um, 
this is the only one I think which kind of directly says that this is a week after the events of um, the end of chapter 6. So that's kind of a cool little difference, I suppose. So yeah, Rion's been for a checkup. Oh, look at that pink monstrosity. <laughs> that is a vile looking car. <laughs> Sorry, that just looked such a boxy piece of crap. Whatever. Let's just, let's move on, shall we? To be fair, that's, it's these, it's the, it's the vehicles, um, which are the kind of the main, uh, which I think are the biggest hint that this was like a upscaled Vita game, you know, like, um, because they just look so boxy and kind of, you know, you're not supposed to look at them close up. They're supposed to be on like a much smaller screen, um, which is why they look kind of shit. <laughs> yeah, I also think, um, because I don't think Rion ever says that she lives around Brick Alley, but this is like the first time I think. <clears throat> Sorry, I think this is the first time that it's confirmation that that's where, that's where um, Rion kind of lives. Kind of a weird coincidence that she's in the same area as um, as um, Asuka. But there you go. I also think it's a bit of a thing as well where they kind of show off uh, where Spiker and Rion are at this point as well. That basically, new song's been released, it's all going well, everything's just fine again. And, uh, and they're going back into the recording studio and, you know, things are kind of you know, uh, pretty much back to normal, so to speak, for um, Rion and Spiker. So, yeah. Uh, so it's confirmation as well that basically they can't remove... Like... Sorry, they can't remove the angel powers from... Um, Rion completely because it's attached to her soul so basically try to remove it it's likely to kill her um, so basically she's kind of uh, there's no kind of guarantee that her powers aren't going to go out of control again like they have done this uh, during chapter 6 in the future and so they kind of have to keep an eye on it and kind of just be careful with it like she can go back to doing her idle thing but there's a chance that stuff like this might happen in the future so uh, and again this is kind of nice that Asuka is kind of like you know if anything starts to go wrong again you can always ask the XRC to kind of help you out um, and we'll always be ready to assist you in any way we can because at this point when uh, she's not, <laughs> I think at this point she's not really thinking about y using her, you know, using her um, soul device to kind of help with all the Eclipse stuff. I think she just kind of wants to move on at this point, <laughs> you know, just, you know, she helped on that one case that involved her and now she just wants to go back to being an idol. So yeah, she wanted to stop off at the um at the park. Yep, why did you want to stop by the park? Ha <laughs> So, uh, yeah, apparently when she was a kid, she used to come here and sing. I do really like these images. <laughs> I think um, they've got a really nice art style to them. 
kind of the sepia tone. And I also just really like the, the artwork that they use. It's really... I don't know, it just looks really nice. <sighs> so yeah, this is kind of the place that she went to <clears throat> on the way home. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, this is where she went when she was on her way home from the uh, from the hospital with her mom. And this is where she kind of sang and had the, you know, practice for her dream to become an idol. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's kind of nice. I think it's also a kind of a just like a, a confirmation that she's not all depressed about all this stuff anymore. That she's kind of trying to move on from everything and um, she just wants to train her, you know, uh, keep her powers under control and just continue being an idol. Okay. <laughs> I do like that, that she's kind of, she doesn't know the name of it, so it's just like one of the, you can't summon one of those weapon thingies, right? <laughs> so I kind of like that. So why did you? <laughs> Let's see what her answer is. Yep, there we go. <laughs> to be fair, it would make sense that she would do that because, you know, Ko is a cousin at the end of the day. She probably doesn't want to, you know, leave him off to his own devices, particularly in this kind of area um, where he's using these older powers. Um, and so she's kind of, so she kind of wants to look after him, continue to look after him. Um, but it's also kind of a little bit of jealousy as well that everybody's taking over the the that <laughs> these girls are taking on the older sister kind of role. <laughs> Taking that role kind of away from her, looking out for Ko. She doesn't really like it. <laughs> I like that Asuka's just like... Yeah, she always kind of like, I'm not really looking after him. <laughs> That's not my thing, you know. I don't really care. I don't care. <laughs> so I kind of like that. <laughs> of course, all the girls are interested in Ko. Uh, <laughs> but I also kind of like, that sets up actually something. Um, her wanted to talk sh to Shiori, it starts, um, sets something up for the ch uh, beginning of chapter 7. We'll see that later. But, there's an eclipse somewhere nearby. My god. What's gonna happen? What's going to happen next? See you next... I don't know. See you next time. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, join me for the next part of uh, Tokyo Xanadu X Plus when we'll be going to... Um, when we'll be going through um, this eclipse which has just popped up nearby and uh, Rion's going to be coming along for the ride. So yeah, see you next time.